So the game we're seeing here is Raiders. It's an action Monster Hunter style MMO. So the main core of the gameplay revolves around hunting down the big monsters, the epic level giant guys. Those are the ones that give the most experience, drop the best loot, uh, but are the most challenging in the game. And that's what the overall goal is going to be, is hunting down these big monsters. Now what sets Raiders apart from other MMOs in the genre is the freeform character progression, what we call it. This gives players the ability to set up their character specifically how they want. Regardless of the base job that you choose, you can learn the jobs of any other class in the game. So right here, Tony is the product manager of Raiders. He brought up the skill tree. His base class is the defender. He has the shield, his weapons are the shield and the one-handed sword. However, as you click through all the other classes, the berserker, the cleric, and the sorcerer, you'll see that all these other skills are available for you to learn as well. So you're not just pigeonholed into one class, into the one uh, uh, job that you choose at the beginning. You can branch out your character as much as you want. For example, if you want to be a tank style uh, healer, you can learn some cleric skills. If you want to be uh, a heavy DPS guy with ranged magic attacks, you can put some of your skills into the Sorcerer and the Berserker. You can really spec out your character however you want. And we, it gives players the feeling that they, they actually built their character themselves as opposed to us building it for them and they're just sort of achieving the path that we set forth for them. Now as far as gameplay, I mentioned earlier that Raiders is an action MMO. It's not tab to target, it's very fast paced, very fluid combat. You have to be able to, uh, to block and to dodge in multiple directions. And as you can see what he's doing here, he's teaching the skills of all the different classes to his base character, giving him a wide variety of things to choose from. Now we're going to go more again and get into some combat, which is where you're obviously going to be spending most of your time. Heal himself up really quick. Now, the, the bosses and even the little enemies go up and start uh, killing the monsters are very difficult in the game. This is one of the more difficult MMOs I've ever played. Uh, the monsters are very fast, they have multiple different attacks. These skeleton archers right here. Now, many games have skeleton archers, but what is what they we're displaying here is what's unique about the raiders' enemies is that you can actually pick up parts of them after you kill them and use it against the other enemies. So he just killed that skeleton and the skeleton skull was on the ground. He can go and pick it up and throw the skull like a grenade for some heavy crit damage. He then went back and he picked up the skeleton's uh, his weapon, his bow and arrow, and he can use that bow and arrow against other enemies. You see, it's a short time duration though. He only has it for a limited amount of time. So that's the core of Raider's combat, is hunting these monsters, even if everyone from down the little, the lowly skeletons up to the big beasts, the big epic bosses. And they all drop some kind of weapon, or they drop some kind of temporary status buff. Like there's uh, other zombie creatures here, and, the, and if you kill them, they, there's a chance of luck to drop their brain, which will increase your attack for a short amount of time. They might drop their arm, uh, which is a consumable, which will regenerate your health. So the action is always looted, it's always changing, and if you notice, whenever he equips any sort of other weapon, his skill trait at the bottom changes. So you're always acquiring the skills of the weapon or the item that you have equipped. Um, it, it keeps the gameplay uh, keeps the gameplay constantly changing. You're never just spamming the same attacks over and over again. It's all we call it dynamic combat, um, ever changing skills, ever changing abilities and weapons. Now I mentioned earlier the monster hunting is the main core of the gameplay, uh, which in, in specifically the big, the epic level bosses. And there's one over here. So we're in the cemetery area. This is a new boss we're showing at E3 when he gets over to it. It's the Tillant Zombie Boss. So this boss is a very good indicator. Uh, uh, it show, displays very well what we're talking about with the, with the dynamic combat, with the different types and styles of attacks for the bosses. This guy has multiple different attacks. He can puke on you to slow you down. He can take big whacks and you deal lots of damage. He can grab you and pick you up in the air. He has a weak spot also. That drum that he's beating is a source of his power and you can actually actively target that drum and break it take it away from it, or not take it away from it, but you can break it and then he'll lose the all the abilities and all the strength he gets from it, making him much more vulnerable and much more susceptible to damage. You actually died. So that goes to what I'm saying about the, the difficulty of the bosses in this game. This scenario was made for, for three people. We only have him playing it right now. But even so, you can see how difficult these guys can get. They're so fast and they're so far, powerful. So we highly encourage party-based gameplay. So what we want players to do is to group up. You can group up with up to eight of your friends, eight other players, and go on these hunting missions. You can find multiple bosses, dozens of bosses, all, th all throughout the land, and they just roam around. The vast majority of the gameplay takes place in the open world. 
and these bosses just roam around. Of course, they're specific to an area, that's why we're in the cemetery, and we see the zombie boss here. But there's, for example, a big spider lady poison boss, and she's somewhere in a big foresty area. They're never in the exact same spot because they wander around, so it's up to you and your party members to go find them and hunt them down. Now, killing these bosses gets you the, big, the, the best gear, the best loot. You're always on the hunt for better weapons and better gear. One unique thing is that one enemy is never going to drop like a completed item. They're always going to drop a piece, like a piece of a recipe, and you'll have to take that to get crafted. It's a huge crafting system in the game. Thousands of different weapons and items, almost seemingly unending amount of craftable items. So you can really refine your character, set them up with the, the gear sets you want, with the uh, different types of weapons that you want. I'm still getting hit. And he <laughs> accidentally pulled a, another mid-boss into the fight too. But one thing you can see, and this goes to the freeform character progression, is if you look at his skill train, he can probably do it pretty soon, is he can heal himself. Now, what's significant about that is that his base class is the defender, so he's essentially like a tank-style character. But because he used, he put his skill points in some cleric abilities, he has the healing spells as well. The one that he has is an AoE healing spell, so if he was in this with a big party, he'd be able to heal everyone together. Now if you hit tab, you'll cycle through your different weapon sets. Each character carries two different weapon sets. So he has the defender weapon and the, sor the, uh, the sorcerer weapons as well. Both skills and jobs are weapon based. So what differentiates the jobs is their weapons. If we go back and look at these characters, this one right here is the berserker. He's strictly melee, high DPS, a little slower but deals a lot of damage. And that character right there is a the sorcerer, perfect. The Sorcerer is the elemental uh, damage catcher, so if you hit one or two or three, you'll see a lot of that. And, and you can see that you actually have to aim. It's not, uh, you're not auto-targeting, you're not just spamming the attacks over and over again. These enemies are physically hitting you and you're physically hitting them. Now you can right-click to block and you can shift to dive out of the way. And those two abilities are going to be, you're going to get very familiar with those because you're going to have to do it very often in the combat. So new things we're showing here at E3, one is, uh, uh, like I said, we highly encourage party-based gameplay. So you can, uh, we give you the ability, you can have a guitar, for example, there's a little guitar you can equip with your group, and you can play some music, and the guitar can also be used as a weapon. We can see that right here, it opens the inventory, equips the guitar. So if you hit I to open your inventory, then you can do it too, just double-click a guitar. And you can play a little tune and play along with, uh, with your party. And of course, if you hit five, you can use it as a weapon. It's a really powerful weapon. Now the other thing that we're uh, giving you the ability to do is a little food crafting, sort of a mobile food crafting system. So if you hit I one more time, and at the bottom you see the little colorful foods, yeah right there, double click any one of those, and you'll actually set up a little food preparation station. What's significant about that is anyone in your party can set one of those up, and everyone else in the party can gather around and use it. So it'll provide a little food item, which you can consume, you can eat, and depending on the item you get, it'll, it'll offer you some sort of buff. It could be an attack increase, defense increase, uh, it could be an HP, EP uh, regeneration. The great thing is that everyone in your party can benefit from it. So you're sharing your resources and you're sharing your abilities with your party. The area that we're in right here is called Heroes Lane. We're in the cemetery in Heroes Lane. All the other demos and the, uh, everything we've done before has been in what's called Broken Mass, which is sort of a beach area. It's very bright, very vibrant and colorful. So we want to show the, uh, the difference and the, the different types of environments that Raiders has to offer. There's everything you'd expect from the, the snowy mountaintops, the deserts, the forests, the long to the big plains. Huge, massive environment. Now this is a free-to-play game. It's totally free-to-play. All the content, all the characters, weapons, everything will be completely free to any player. So that's Raiders gameplay in a nutshell. Action-based combat, big monster hunting, and setting up your character to your specifications. That's everything we're showing today. Uh, closed beta will be uh, Q3 2012, and the open beta will be shortly after that. For updates and any information, you can go to playraiders.com.